a Gentile's faith. We are to realize that God sometimes allows crises in people's lives to bring them to true faith in His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Here's Dr. Gene Getz. This principle is illustrated in this next event in the life of a Gentile. Now that's very significant because what John has recorded for us is that religious Jews need the Savior. Samaritan women and men need the Savior. But so do all Gentiles, and that includes most of us listening or in this room tonight. And what you're going to see here is that this in some respects, if I can fast forward you to when the church was born, before the church was born, when the disciples were with Jesus before He returned to heaven, the twelve or the eleven, Judas was not there. And they said to Him, Master, are you going to now restore the kingdom to Israel? And Jesus, before He ascended, said, you are to go back to Jerusalem. It's not for you to know the times or the seasons, but I want you to go back to Jerusalem. And when the Spirit of God comes on you, you will be my witnesses. Where? In Jerusalem, where Nicodemus lived. In Judea, which is beyond Jerusalem. In Samaria, where the Samaritans lived, and to the ends of the earth, where the Gentiles live. And so you see, Jesus is laying the groundwork with these three events, these three stories. It's a marvelous continuity, a marvelous correlation. Now here we have what I've called the, a crisis in this particular situation. And it happens to be a um, a very royal official. So, let's call it the official's crisis. He's facing a crisis. He went again to Cana of Galilee. That is, Jesus returned to where He worked the first miracle. He went again to Cana of Galilee where He had turned the water into wine. There was a certain royal official whose son was ill at Capernaum. Now, where was this man from? Capernaum. So Jesus was no stranger to him, because Jesus had been in Capernaum, and He had worked a lot of miracles in that area. But notice what happened. When this man heard that Jesus had come from Judea into Galilee, he went to him and pleaded with him to come down and heal his son since he was about to die. Now to get the continuity, remember Jesus went to Jerusalem, you remember? Now He's coming back through Samaria. He had heard that Jesus had gone from Galilee up to Jerusalem and heard that He was now back. But He was back in Cana and His son is ill. And so we have this event where He comes and it probably took Him about two days to get from Capernaum to Canaan. It's only about ten miles but you have to go along the shore of Galilee and then up through the mountains and over a big pass and all the way to Cana. It's quite a ways. Those of you who have been there are nodding. So He comes and He pleads with Jesus. But notice, Jesus tested Him. Jesus told Him, unless you people see signs and wonders, you will not believe. He takes the opportunity, and Jesus did this quite often. Here is this man begging Jesus. And there are a lot of people surrounding Him. And most of them were Jews. And they were wondering about Jesus. And here comes a Gentile. And so he makes a statement to these people using this nobleman as an illustration. He says, unless you people see signs and wonders, you will not believe. Sir, the official said to him, and by the way, all these people are really listening. Sir, the official said to him, come down before my boy dies. Go, Jesus told him. Your son will live. And the man believed what Jesus said to him and departed. Now what did he believe? Well basically I think he believed that Jesus had the power to do it. 
His faith was still in Jesus' power, not in Jesus Himself. And you're going to see that that changed. And see, that's part of the message that John is trying to get across all along. And so, what we read is simply this, going on to what I've called true faith. While he, that is this official, was still going down, and going down was literal, going down from Cana back to Capernaum, I'm sure he made the trip very quickly. While he was still going down, his servants met him saying that his boy was alive. He asked them at what time he got better. Yesterday at one in the afternoon the fever left him. They answered. And notice, the father realized this was the very hour at which Jesus had told him, your son will live. And something happened that illustrates why John recorded this. It also illustrates his purpose in all of the record in this gospel. So he, that is, the nobleman, this royal official, he himself believed. Hadn't he believed? Yes, he believed that Jesus had the power. He believed in the miracle possibility. But now, I think, he's believing who Jesus really is. So he himself believed along with his whole household. And again you will see that many times whole households came to faith in Christ. When the Philippian jailer came out of that tornado or out of that earthquake, I should say, that earthquake where the jail doors fell off, the chains fell off, he came to Paul and Silas and said, what must I do to be saved? And Paul said, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved and your whole household. That is, not based on your faith, but if they as well believe. And so we see that illustrated here even prior to Jesus going to the cross and prior to His resurrection. So He Himself believed along with His whole household. Now this was also the second sign Jesus performed after He came from Judea to Galilee. So you see the pattern. Again, back to John's purpose. And we can't review this too often to really see how all this all fits together. We read the purpose. John performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written. Water to wine? That was the first selected sign demonstrating that Jesus was a master of quality. Remember? It was the best wine. But the second sign, the one we just read about. A man was in Capernaum, 20 miles away in Cana. Jesus said, go. Your son lives. In other words, Jesus Christ is the master of distance. See, distance means nothing to God. Jesus could have healed that boy if he were 10,000 miles away. He could have healed that boy if he were 10 million miles away. Why? Because Jesus is the master of distance. And you're going to see that every one of the signs that John selected is different. It reflects a different quality of what Jesus Christ can do because of who He is. So, we read, but these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in His name. And I think we see that beautifully illustrated in this man when he believed initially in Christ's power. But then it says, he really believed that by believing you may have life in his name. So here's a uh, question to, uh, to think about in relationship to application. Can you think of situations where God used a crisis in someone's life 
to bring that person to faith in Christ that resulted in a true salvation experience. What about your own experience? Well, what we've seen already here in the Gospel of John, Nicodemus had a crisis when he first saw Jesus working miracles. And he really had a crisis when Jesus challenged him. That was a crisis that I think ultimately brought him to faith. The Samaritan woman, she had a crisis. She met a man that told her everything she had done. And it changed her life. But it was a crisis. The nobleman, his was a real crisis. His son was dying. And he came and said, Jesus, would you do something? And of course, Jesus did. So you're going to see that basically faith in Christ often comes through crises at different levels. I can think back of my own experience when I came to Christ. I had a minor crisis because two of my best friends became believers. And we were three amigos, as it were. And they went one direction and I went continued in the other direction in terms of their life change. And God used that in my life. I lost two of my best friends, as it were. But I regained two brothers in Christ, and we're all three believers. At different levels, God uses crises to bring us to Jesus. And the amazing thing is that I've talked with people who've gone through crises that I just... I can't even conceive of it. But as a result of it, they came to Christ. And they said, that crisis was the best thing that ever happened to me. Because through that crisis, I came to really believe in Jesus Christ and who He is. And it changed my life and gave me eternal life through faith. So God uses crisis. So, the principle reads, we're to realize that God sometimes allows crises in people's lives to bring them to true faith in His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ.